Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool jukebox repair video for you this evening. We have had this uh, row AMI box bumping around the shop here for a while. We got off of a gentleman and it had an, some kind of error message in it. And something smelled inside it like it had burnt up. <laughs> so It's been sitting around for a while and it's finally time for us to fix it. So we figured we would pull it out, check it out, fix it, film it, fill it full of CDs, play it, and then sell it. What do you think about that? That's our plan. So the first part was we would pull it out of where we had it stashed in the back. And we did. So here it sits in our beautiful showroom. It's just me, myself, and I right now. But tomorrow, we'll have lots of people in going, Wow, that was a cool old jukebox. Uh, but we got to try to fix it and figure out what's going on with it. Might have to order some parts. I have worked on these before, but I worked on them out on route. So I didn't really do any kind of component repair or anything. It was more just operating them and fixing minor things. And I think I messed with the pages on some a few times where they, they wouldn't turn right and stuff like that. But this is some kind of component that's burned up. And uh, we're going to figure it out together, though. What do you think about that? So I'm going to uh, carefully go through it. We'll figure out how it works. And if you've got one in a similar vintage of this uh, row, maybe it'll help you figure yours out, too. So we're going to step through it and learn together. Um, I don't even know what model this is, but we'll look here in a minute. I'll go around to the back of it. But the first thing I want to do is uh, open it up and see what's going on inside of it. Whenever I move one, I don't know if I can do this with one hand or not. Whenever I move one, I always like to, to uh, look inside of them before I uh, turn them on because I don't want to. Well, that thing is heavy as hell. I don't want to turn them on when there might be stuff loose that's broken loose inside or something. Um, there may be, you know, the power supply fell off the wall and it's hanging in the back of the cabinet. Uh, so I, I like to just make sure everything's still where it's supposed to be before I plug it in. So let me open this heavy freaking door and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have a little pad of paper here. Our uh, buddies down the road in Gastonia. Uh, own a printing company and they always give us these little scratch paper pads uh, The first thing I noticed was you know, I did get the door open That thing is heavy so what's pretty common on these is these gas shocks wear out and So somebody will make it like a, like this has a little pipe on it That you can kind of move around so that it kind of jams between the end of the strut and the top and holds the door open but that door probably weighs 50 pounds um, that thing falls and hits you on the head it might do some damage so I'd like to at least see how much new shocks cost um, so this says Suspa this is the brand here. Suspa. So I'm going to write that down and I'll see if I can track those down. Um, I'm sure many people have ran into that problem. Okay, so I looked up the parts number and it appears that you can get those actually from jukeboxparts.com. They're about $30 each. So uh, you might be able to find them cheaper if you uh, tried to measure them and get the ones uh, that go on a car but you'd need some that can hold up a little bit of weight <laughs> I guess the back I guess the, the back of a, a hatch of a car probably weighs about the same look at this thing like why would they do it like that that looks like it's it's purposefully so it will impale your head and I haven't even checked out my soft spot in a long time I mean I think it's all filled in but I don't know I'm young I don't know Look at this one. That's even worse, I think. Look at this. There are daggers on the top of the freaking door. And then they designed it with a freaking gas spring that dies slowly so that it'll stab your ass whenever you go to work on it. I just, I don't know about all this. 
So anyway, let's see if we can get this bad boy out of here. What the hell? Uh, this oh, this is a CD100. I figured out 100A, 100A, as opposed to CD100, which was the very first one. This is the basically the second one. If I can keep from getting stabbed, I might be able to get this sucker up and out of here. How come I can't do any of it one-handed? Got that out. It's a two-hand job, though. It can sit back here in the back where nobody hopefully will find it and break any of the plastic. Leave my plastic alone! Alright, so we are down into it now. So, um... Board came off the front, everything's cool. So that gets us down here into the, there's no manual in it, unfortunately. That would have helped a little bit. Um, got a few boards down in here. This is the amplifier. This is, I guess, the power supply. Um, and then this has some coils and some capacitors and some resistors on it. I have no idea what that would be for, but maybe some lights or something. I don't know. There's our central com control computer. Then we have our CD rack here in the back. And then uh, it's got a pro player in it, which I believe is the best one. I think it came out a little later. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn it on. We're going to see what kind of uh, error message we get if that was correct and what, what it was doing. Uh, it's in normal mode and it's on this little thing here. Whenever the door shuts it pushes both of those back. So let's turn it on and see if we get anything out of it. Nothing's hanging in the way or or anything. We are getting some error. lights flashing on the CCC board. Looks like there's another mech down there. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting smoke. We're getting smoke, folks. So we're getting smoke coming up from here. I don't even know what board's down there, so we're gonna have to dig that out and see what, <laughs> see what's going on, but it did not like that. Ooh, something's burning. Let's, uh, let's get that out of there. So here is that part. It was mounted on the side there. And I, I didn't see it this time, but I believe we were getting like a board error message or something whenever we turned it on. It's been probably a year since we got this thing. But I just turned it on and I could see a billow of smoke coming up from here somewhere. And I can smell it a little bit right now. But everything's turned off and everything. We'll see what we can do. Y'all will have to help me hold it still while I take it loose. There we go. Don't get dizzy. Okay, so something is probably burnt all to hell in here. What do you think it is? You old timers probably already know. I'm going to guess there's a bad diode. Could be a capacitor. It's not a resistor because it smells like... Uh, it, it, <laughs> it smells like burning plastic. I see nothing that looks like it's on fire. Hmm. I 
was hoping for like, you know, something like obviously flamed out so that we could know for sure what it was. What a letdown. It's better whenever it's like obvious. Hmm. Looking for any kind of burn mark. Oh, snap! It's obvious! And there we are. That would be the culprit. Now, why is it doing that? wonder if I'm going to be able to find schematics for this thing. It's a ULN 2003A. What is that, folks? All you experts out there. ULN 2003A. Hmm. And it's the only one in here. So now, is it... Uh, I, I, I'd like to have the schematics because I could check the... Uh, to see if it uses the same voltage as everything else. Or to see what drives it. Or to see if it's just this chip failed. You know, it could be... It could just be that that chip died. Oh no, the one next to it's the same, ULN 2003A. So they're both the same chip. So one died and the other one didn't, but I, I don't even know what they do. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to find some schematics and track down what we're even looking at. But, that's obviously the problem. That's what we were smelling. It was a, uh, it was an IC chip. Now folks, an IC chip, is it more like a capacitor? Or more like a resistor? It's kind of more like a transistor, but a transistor really is kind of like a diode. I could smell that it was a chip. I just said it was a diode, but it's the same smell, I'll bet. I think, it, I think you can tell the difference in the smells. <laughs> I'm trying to improve my uh, Sylvester imperson impersonation. So you just add a lisp to everything. Okay, uh, I'm going to see if I can find any kind of schematics or anything, figure out what in the world the ULN 2003A is doing on this sucker. Okay, so I am looking at the service manual. Apparently, this is an updated version of the mechanism control computer. But the one that came with it, had a similar kind of function. I don't have the schematics for this exact one, but it kind of worked the same. So they're, they're using this chip. Basically, there's two of them. So they're using one to drive LEDs and one to drive motors. So, <laughs> so the, the logic signal for like the magazine motor comes into the chip and then it basically grounds motors, diodes, etc. The diodes are running off of like 8 volts. Um, but I'm thinking we might have a motor that's screwed up. What if a motor shorted out or something? And so basically the way I understand it, like this input, like the logic tells the chip to ground that pin, which means that the voltage on the other end of whatever is connected to that pin runs through the chip and it can do up to 50 volts. But it could be that the power supply is screwed up. What if the power supply is supposed to be sending 50 volts to the motor or 30 volts to the motor and it's sending 100 volts to the motor or something. So it's one of those things where it could just be that that chip's bad. See like the counters here run off 28 volts and that that uh, chip is grounding that so the 28 volts is actually running through the chip. But if that voltage were to get really high, where the chip can't handle it, like it's 100 volts or something, that would fry that chip. The other one might not be fried because it might be the one that does the diodes, which only gets 8 volts. So I think it might be something like that. So instead of just replacing the chip and popping it back in, 
I think there might be something in the power supply, or there might be a um, a motor that's stuck on, that's uh, burnt up or something. So that's where I'm. That's where my mind is heading. So uh, I'm gonna have to do some more research. We're probably gonna have to look at the power supply first and check voltages there and make sure everything's right. And if it all seems right, then maybe we'll swap the chip. <laughs> So let's see if we can get the, uh, the figure out the how to check the voltages coming out of the power supply. Okay, folks, we're looking in the manual if this power supply is still similar to the old one. <laughs> they may have updated it. So there is the power supply. And here is the harness that comes out. Apparently there's one connector with nine pins on it. And the main voltages are 28 volts DC, 28 volts AC, um, and then 8 volts DC. You can't see that. Let me let me blow it up so you can see that. That's what that is. That's a little better. All right, so the main voltage is out of the power supply, 28 volts DC, 28 volts AC, and 8 volts DC. And then you've got some common wires, grounds. And interestingly enough, the power switch turns off 28 volt AC, 28 volt DC, and the 8 volts DC. So, I wonder if this little thing will show us what goes to the motors? You would think it would be that AC. You would think. Well, this is the mechanism control. This is the board we're having the problems with. And it gets 28 and 8, and then it also gets the 28 volt. AC and then it is what runs the motors the motors are run off AC voltage okay so uh, we're gonna check on the power supply to see if we're getting our correct power so let me go back up here a couple pages there is this little area here that's telling you like this, the, the order of the theory of operation. Power is turned on, the voltages and commons are applied to modules and components. At line voltage 115 volt AC, but here we're a little higher than that. We're at almost 125. Um, so it may be even a little higher. So 28 volt AC should measure 26 to 30. 28 volt DC should measure 23 to 30. 8 volt DC should measure 8.2 to 9.4. And 9.5 volt AC should be measure between 8.75 to 10 volt AC. I haven't found that one yet. I don't know what what board uses that yet. It might just be the the um, the uh, bill acceptor or something like that. <laughs> but we have written down all of that. This is our pin out. So now we're going to go turn it on without that mech board in it so it can't catch on fire. And uh, measure the voltages out of the power supply. The way it looked, it looked like with the power off, you should get the voltages out of the power supply. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we'll try that. But uh, we'll go check that out. All right, folks. So they got that sucker buried in there. So I had to take out the uh, amplifier, which just unplugs and stuff. But if you look, there are three LEDs there on the left. It says 8 volts DC, 28 volts DC, 28 volts AC. And there is the power supply, the plug there on the left. And so turn the power switch on. Oh, and it, when you turn the switch off, it does turn all that off. Uh, so the 8 volt DC, we're getting 9.13 which is within the legal limits according to the uh, the uh, manual. The 28 volts DC, we're getting 30.3, just slightly higher than the manual, but it's supposed to be 28, you know, 30.3, eh, 
close enough. And then the 28 volts AC, we've got 30.4. Again, just slightly higher than what the manual says. So I think that's fine. Why am I hearing clicking? There's some stuff clicking behind me. Um, something's trying to move or something. Uh, And we're getting a system error, but remember the mechanism board's out of it, so. What am I hearing trying to move? Oh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I can't believe you, Joe. You're all worried about the disc turning around. That's what you were hearing. The little CDs are moving around. Okay, so uh, I think the power supply is fine. So I guess we're just going to wing it. <laughs> we've, got the, we've got the motors. I guess I could try to see if they seem like they're shorted. Huh. Let me see if I can figure out what the wiring of the motors is, and we'll try to uh, measure the resistance across the motor. If it's real short, you know, like less than one ohm or something, it could be that the the dot motor's obviously shorted, and that's what's frying it. So we'll check that next. I'll, I'm gonna look on the schematics and see what the uh, what the wiring is for the motors. Okay, so this connector P12 goes to two motors and a solenoid. So if one of those is fried, I was thinking maybe that might be the problem, but I don't know. Um, so we're going to test it, though, to just see. So we can test between the black wire and the white wire, and that'll check the, the uh, transfer motor. The black wire and the yellow and black wire will test the magazine motor, and the black wire and the white and black wire will test the detent. So we're just going to see if one of those seems real shorted or something. And I found our 9.5 volt. There's a separate transformer here that makes that for the pro player. Or the original player. The one that's in it now is a pro player. It might not use it anymore. Okay, so we're going to test those next. This thing's been updated, um, but the wiring probably wasn't updated, so that, that ought to be the same. And then once if we do find something wrong, maybe we can track down we can track it back to that chip or something. Okay, so here's the wiring that plugged into that uh, mechanism board and that plug there is what has the two motors and the solenoid on it. So I checked the solenoid and it's got 31.6 ohms of resistance. And you can see it in the back there. You can't see it too good, but it's back here. And it looks brand new. Okay, and so both of the motors also look brand new. They don't look burnt up or anything like that, but they do have a really low resistance. One of them has 1.2 ohms and one has 1.5 ohms. Maybe, and my meter usually is 0.1 or 0.2 off, so it may even be lower than that. Uh, so, could be something's wrong with the motors, but since they're both kind of similar, it kind of seems like they're just that's just how they work. They're probably just probably because they're so strong, they need to have a low uh, resistance on the winding. So it's got that that bite, that grab, that strength. So uh, we're down to now. The only thing I can do is uh, swap that chip and plug the thing back in and see if it works. So that's our next step. So let's go look at the board. So looking at the back of the board, that chip has been replaced before. But this gentleman that had it, um, he didn't mess with anything. So he wouldn't have done it. So apparently, though, at one point it, it has had this issue before, which tells me that it's probably a fairly common issue. wish they would have put a socket in it. If I could go back in time and get them to put a socket in it, that'd be much better for me. They also replaced this one, which is a uh, 74HC57. No, HCS74. I got that right. 74HC574. 74574. Uh, and then they've replaced this one as well, which is a Philips P. 80 C 31 S B P N. I have no clue what that is, but it looks looks uh, proprietary. <laughs> so 
So uh, I'm going to check to see if any of the inputs are connected to the or shorted to the outputs. That'd be bad because that means that the the voltage that runs the motors might have got to the logic side and fried some of this other stuff. So I'm going to see if uh, if it seems like any of those are shorted. Okay, so I'm trying to figure this out. Um, so I've got the ground test point right here. If I test from ground to pin 8 of the, U the ULN 2003 that we think might be fine, which is this one, uh, pin 8 is connected to ground because that's the ground pin on it. But on this one, pin 8 is not connected to ground. There's 6K resistance. And if you look at the board, it's one of these ones with... Um, multiple layers I suppose. You see on the, on the bottom left pin how you can see it's connected to the the main plane of the board that's how it's getting its ground. And then on this one as well and on this one as well but it doesn't test as ground so I don't know. And so between pin 8 and pin 9 9 is supposed to be the common uh, connection which I guess they could run power through if they wanted to. I remember, I don't have the schematics for it. Um, pin 9 is not connected to u eight's pin 9, so it's a different power source or whatever. Um, but it's it's only got like 5 ohms resistance between pin 8 and pin 9, but pin 8 is not ground. And pin 11 um, is only has about 40 ohms resistance, 20 ohms resistance between pin 8 and pin 11. But nothing else seems shorted, so none of these inputs, 1 through 7, seem shorted to any of the outputs. So I'm thinking that's a good thing. So it's probably, hopefully, it didn't fry any of these other logic chips. So I'm going to pull it off the board and then test it off the board too and test the, the pads on the board to see if anything's shorted or what the deal is. That ground thing's a little weird. That chip you would think would be grounded, but maybe they're using it a different way. All right, so I successfully got the old one out. That pin eight on the on the uh, uh, sheets I see it says that that's supposed to be ground, but it, on the on the uh, logic diagrams I see it doesn't really use a, a uh, five and a ground like a regular chip does. So it may be that it's not necessary. I don't know, or they can do something different where they don't use pin eight. But on the actual chip that I that I removed. Pin 8 and 9 are shorted. Pin 8 and 11 are basically shorted. Um, on a new chip, they're not. On this one, they're not. And that pin 8 does not connect to pin 8 of this or to ground. But if you look really carefully, I might be able to get it where you can see it. If you look really carefully, around the bottom left pin, pin 8, can you see that it, it's isolated? See the little traces where it's connected to the uh, I don't know what the hell you even call it there's a trace under there inside the board it must be a multi-level board that it's that it's connected to but there is a line above pin 8 between 8 and 7 that isolates it and then it comes down square and it kinda goes around and I can't I kinda lose it after that so it, it does look like they're not connecting it to a ground plane. They're just connecting it to some other plane. So I don't know what it goes to. I wish I had the schematic. I could tell. But I'm just going to put a socket in it. It doesn't look like the trace is damaged or that the via is damaged, uh, where it's not connecting inside there like it should or anything. None of that looks messed up. So I'm just going to put a socket in it. We'll pop in a, a new ULN 2003, which I do have for some reason. I don't know why I've got those, but I must have used them on something. Uh, and then we'll put it back in the thing and see if it makes any of the little motors tw twirl. So here's the back. This is pin 8. It flowed really really nice like the other ones did, which tells me that the via is probably not screwed up. Usually if you screw that up, what will happen is the solder will stay up here on the top and it won't seep down through the via. 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 <laughs> if I say I'm going somewhere, I say I'm going there via. Like I go to Myrtle Beach via Lancaster. But if it's going, if it's a physical thing, I call it a via. Um, but it flowed really well through there, so I think it's fine. I don't know. The only concern would be that maybe it's not, there's that something inside it's supposed to connect to isn't happening, but I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, a little socket. Hopefully the socket can handle 28 volts. And if it can, we're good to go. 
So I'll put that chip in and put it all back in and then we'll pop it in the machine and see if it does anything. All right, folks, so we still got the amp out of it and we still got the CD rack out of it, but we bolted it all back in. It actually comes out really easy. And this is the, the Dash 12 version, so it's the newer one. So it's not really the one for the 100A. So we're gonna turn it on and see if it does anything or if it catches on fire again. <laughs> Joey's standing 15 feet back. He thinks it's going to blow up. Unbelievable, Joe. You're going to leave me over here to die in the fire. Yeah, somebody's got to call somebody. That's true. That's how you do it, son. That's how you do it. So why is it doing this mess, you might wonder. Joey, why is it doing this? Got a bunch of stuff saved in the memory. Yep. It's trying to play all the CDs that it was trying to play before that it's been saving in the memory for Lord knows how long. And uh, it's laying them down and saying, wait a minute, there's no CD there. And so now it's permanently putting in the memory that that CD doesn't exist anymore. So the next time we go to play one of those, it's, it's not going to be willing to play it. But man, we might have fixed it. We got a board error light over here. It's on, so that probably ain't good. So maybe, maybe it's a bad thing. So we'll have to see what the board error light means. Over here we have our five volt light on, but our row link command or system error and our board error lights are off, so we're good. We still have the amp unplugged, of course. Maybe they got it set on random play. Could be. And it's going through and none of them are in there. Could be. Let's do this. I don't think it had that many doors. Selections remaining zero. It no longer says out of order, so that's good. We'll let it keep running for a few and see if it if it gets tired and wears its little self out. <laughs> And come back. Okay, so I went into the service mode, which there's a little switch behind the door there on the left. I showed that earlier. And then you type 8, and it says errors. Errors exist. No, it says errors exist, and then you type 8. And then it says status. And then you type 0, and it says error history. And then you press popular, and it said A, which means active error, but an active error it stays active until you clear it. Um, I have no clue why. <laughs> it's just what it does. So it doesn't mean that it's still doing it for whatever reason. Uh, and it was 05-63, which means that the mechanism to the central computer communication was lost. And it did it five times. And when it does that, it throws up an error message. And then there was a warning, uh, so the next one was 14.5, was, was the RAM check some error, which, you know, uh, usually that means like a battery died or something. Uh, I cleared those out. The, the thing keeps sitting there doing its thing. I don't think it should be doing that if it's in service mode, even if it was playing all the records. I mean, you wouldn't think. Um... And then it, uh, I went back out, turned it off, turned it back on, went back into the service mode, and there are no errors. So it's not, it's not throwing up more errors. All of those lights are lit on the mech board, but they're not lit on the, the CCC board. But I'm thinking that maybe that other ULN chip is bad. Because the, the ULN, one of them does the diodes, one of them does the motors. Well, clearly the one we replaced must have done the motors because now there's motoring. <laughs> right but now all of the LEDs are on which it really shouldn't do that because one of them's like the scan switch one of them's the cancel switch one of them's the the, the motors moving and all that one of them the error one of them's the 5 volt they shouldn't all be on they're supposed to blink and stuff but they're all on well it could be that that ULN the other ULN chip is messed up and it's just shorted them all on where they're all on all the time um or it could be that the chip that drives both of those ULNs is messed up. And so it's got the one constantly scanning. It's got the other one constantly uh, uh, 
turning the little switch on the side that, that lifts up the flap and all that or whatever. Um, so it could be that. It could be that uh, it's got the contact switch stuck. I mean, the, the cancel switch stuck where it's canceling it, but I don't know why it would play over and over again if it was just canceling. So we've still got issues, so I'm going to keep working on it, but that'll be another video. I think we've gone far enough today. We've at least got it partially fixed. It's, got, it's a little better than it was, isn't it? So I think next up, I need to, uh, I think the first thing I might do is put that other ULN in a socket just to see if that changes anything. It could be where it's, oh, one, one other little piece of evidence. When you turn it back on, there's no, it, there's no errors. So if the thing is not communicating with the CCC, you would think that there would it would throw up an error, but it does not. And the CCC does not give an error. It was earlier, you saw that, but it's not now. So they could be talking on that little row link, they call it. There's two, two uh, wires that go to it. So that'll be for next time, but we've got a little bit, gone through it a little bit. We've, we've discovered a lot so far, right? Well, I'm learning on this, so hopefully you're learning too. So I'll, I'll keep messing with it and film another video. Now, if I upload this one, I must have fixed it because I don't like to upload the videos until I figure it all out. So I don't like to upload a video where I, you know, get halfway through it and then I never figure it out so the second video never comes out. I've done that a couple times, but not usually. Um, so we're about halfway there, I think, on this one. But I think that mech board still has some issues, whether it's just those LEDs are stuck on. It could be that the thing is in random setup where it plays randomly or something, and it's, it's just playing nonstop. Joe was pointing out to me that it was moving the exact same amount of CDs each time. So it, it, it must not be that it has a selection stored in it, or they would be a little more random than that. So it's in some kind of mode, or that mech board is just tripping. To rip in. I wish I had the full set of schematics for that newer board, but I don't. But we'll figure it out. So uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Give us a thumbs up for filming it for you. And we'll see you on the next video soon. We'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there's a link to Amazon down below. If you click that uh, and go to Amazon and buy anything, it gives us a tip. So thanks for doing that, everybody that's been doing that. And uh, also... Check out our other channel. My brother has a channel. It's called My Brother Donnie. It's literally My Brother Donnie. And he and I have bought this old building in downtown Jefferson, South Carolina, this little town uh, down here in the south. If you like the south like we love the south, this little town uh, has this old grocery store. It's this little tiny building, 3,000 square feet. And we're working on it and painting and redoing the bathroom and fixing the air conditioning and doing electrical stuff and putting a new roof on it and all that. That's pretty fun. Donnie's uh, a character. You might enjoy that. So go check that out if you haven't already. But we'll see you on the next video. Hopefully we'll get this sucker up and running next time.